<laughs> Imagine how big my butt's gonna be. That's the one thing you do lose when you get pregnant and have a baby. That's what? That's, that, that was my experience. Not saying that's gonna be yours, but that was just me. Okay, let's work out. Let's just do it! Hello, my strong, strong friends. Today, I'm gonna take you guys through day three of my workout this week. It's gonna be very fun because we're starting off with Zerker squats. And if you never heard of that, then keep watching because I'm gonna teach you how to do it. If you're new here, hello, my name is Meg, and I make videos about lifting weights, getting super strong. I do some nutrition stuff here and there. And today, we're following Stronger by the Day. That's my app and program. And basically, if you wanna get super strong, then follow Stronger by the Day. It's gonna be so much fun. There's a free sample. I'll link that down below. Let's get it. Okay, what are we doing? Grid, do you wanna work out with me? I already worked out, but I'm down. I already did a workout today too. So we're basically at the same level, but you're like way stronger than me. I'm not strong. At this moment in time, you are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that for now. <laughs> I feel great. We went to Canada and I'm sorry to my Canadian friends, but your gyms were closed and I was not happy with that. I realize it's for the greater good, but coming from Texas, it was a culture shock. And I have a newfound respect for all of you training at home, doing body weight programs. I'll have to do the body weight video in the next one because I was like so sad by myself, just like doing like body weight exercises. <laughs> it was sad. I actually just didn't train. <laughs> Tried to make you think that I was at home doing things, but I just said, okay, chalk it up. I'll be back in the gym next week. Anyway, okay, this is me warming up. Very intentional. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a preview of the workout. We got Zerker squats, deadlift, um, then some lower body accessories. If you ever want to on the app, you can always turn the warm up on and that'll be introduced into your workout. You saw me warm up, I'm not, I'm gonna be lazy today. I'll warm up off camera is what I meant to say. But anyway, when you click start workout, then the app will start to give you all your numbers and it'll pull up what I did last for Zerker squats. And I cannot believe that I Zerker squatted 105 pounds last time. That seems like too much, but let's just go for it and we'll try to beat our weights that we did last time. All right, come on over. Come on over, baby. Come on over, baby. Great, are you gonna zerker with me? I I don't think I know what that is. Oh, well, let me teach you. This is Emmerich's bar. It's only 15 pounds, so we're gonna get a big girl bar or a big boy bar. Zerker squats. I'm gonna teach you, Grid, and everyone watching at home how to do it. First thing, you're going to need this. Okay, ours is hilariously called a perfect peach pad. <laughs> Some people call this something derogatory, but I won't repeat it here. And we're gonna use this because in a Zerker squat, the bar is actually gonna be on our elbows, the crooks of our elbows. What do you call this part? What is that called? The weenus? The weenus? No, this is the weenus, I think. Oh. Anyway. The elbow pit. The elbow pit, yeah. This is gonna be right in your elbow pits. And Zerkers are kind of just a fun variation to play around with, which is sort of the purpose of what we're using them for. You will notice your core is toasted after doing some Zerker squats, similarly to how your core might feel when you do front squats when you haven't done them in a while. Because of the bar placement, we're gonna need to keep our torso very upright when we're doing the Zerkers. But this is the basic movement. So the bar is gonna be in the crooks of our elbows. You can see why I've got the bar pad. I don't recommend using a bar pad for back squats or front squats, obviously. But for these, you can do it. There's no need to be a hero with circus. Some people will disagree. You can hold your hands or you can just keep closed fists um, when you unrack. And then you're just gonna squat down, making sure that you're kind of um, avoiding what my body wants to do is kind of collapse. <laughs> and my torso wants to collapse, but you're going to try and keep your elbows somewhat up, drive up through your elbows um, and complete your squats. So yeah, torso is gonna be really upright and you're gonna notice a nice little sore feeling the next day. So let's get to zerkering. It's a deload week, so we're doing pretty light work. Let's see how heavy we can go though, without going too heavy. We're gonna go heavy. <laughs> okay. Honestly, potentiation and like doing the movement with 
no or low weight is going to be probably the best thing you can do in your warm up. You want to emulate the movement patterns that you're going to do when you have a lot of weight on the bar. So, um, yeah, you can do whatever warm up feels good to you. Um, and for me, it's just taking a couple sets of these. Okay, this is my first working set though. Oh God, it's so heavy. Oh Jesus. Our knees are popping, snap, crackle, popping, but that's just a matter of us being a little older. Did you just call me old? I mean, we're getting up there. I know I'm like 10 years older than you, but. Not even. <laughs> okay, uh, whoa, do I wanna do this? No, I don't. Let me get the fives first. Okay, calm down. Calm down, lady. How did that set feel for you, Gray? Uh, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of engagement of a lot of muscles. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. We never program for the sake of programming an exercise, like for novelty, but a healthy amount of novelty, something like a Zerker squat where it's like, I mean, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun to just do something different. Oh God! We're just doing doubles. It's doubles at a four or five rest and reps in reserve. So it's a deload week, so we're just kind of chilling. But if you follow this workout and want to go heavier, like I'm about to do, let's get it. Hi, Karamba. That's 115, not bad. Let me log that one, because I'm proud of it. So, 135? Let's try 125 first, and then see how we, see how that feels on my snap, crackle, pop knees. Come on, come on, wake up. If you're like me and your knees are making cracking sounds all the time, unless you're in pain, it's probably not a big deal. If you wear something compressive, like knee sleeves, or like knee wraps, and I mean like soft cloth knee wraps, like a Kelly roll. You might not hear the crack. Some compression, some warmth might help you, um, might help you not hear that. <laughs> and it might not happen as much or as often. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. It can be distracting though. Pray for me, just kidding. It feels actually pretty good, considering I went to Canada. <laughs> I think we got 135 in us. I think, yeah. Okay. Everybody look how nice Grid's form is. He's so upright. Whoa. Yo, you gotta come. Muscle like pausing at the bottom for some reason. Uh, cause you wanna show everybody how much stronger you are than me. <laughs> Let's do it, let's do it, let, let, let's do it. If we weren't shooting a YouTube video, I would definitely just add another five, but I gotta put on the big plates for you guys. I can't just disappoint you like that. Oh my God. I believe in you. Oh, thanks. Nice. That was not, it was my back like this. <laughs> oh, I have a good TikTok idea. This is what Meg looks like most of the day. That's my, that's my idea. It's the 007 <coughs> uh, TikTok. Have you seen that? No. It's like, they call me 007. Zero squats done, zero deadlifts lifted, seven Instagrams posted. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Oh, thanks. Okay, let's trim it. Oh, thanks. 
I believe in you. <laughs> That's cute. Sorry, I, d I didn't know how to zoom out. <laughs> so, but it looks good from my angle. <laughs> Meg, is Ryan warming up? Trying. I need a lot. I need to steal that uh, space heater. Oh, you can have it. Can I point it right at my knees? Yeah, we'll snap back the pop. It's a little cold. Oh, is this this? We're trying. Two new attempts at the flavor we rejected in LA. Oh. Uh, for the product that's new. Okay. We've locked in like all the other ones, but we've, this is like attempt four and five on this. Mm. So this is A's on the left, B's gonna be on the right. Nope, you have your own. Oh, sorry, jeez. This is A? Yeah, but oh, don't. That's B. Don't mix sorry. them up because we need to keep them separate. And whoever is Jolie, if you're editing, Maybe black and white for this segment. Oh, no colors. You can tell no logos. Is. Oh, this is pretty good. So, Wait, which one on your left? Which one did you try? A. This A. Is... Just kidding. That tastes good. Better than the previous attempts, I think. Mm, it does. Hmm. A is better. Shit. Oh, you disagree? Hold on. Let me cleanse my palate. I need some yeah. ginger or something. Did I mix up my samples? Because this tastes salty to me. Maybe B tastes better. <laughs> I think they're both good. It's hard doing taste tests, actually. This product, this product is one that, like, pre-workout and pump and creatine, you can kind of make taste however you want. This product, you, it, it, the ingredients make it taste a certain way. So you have to play with the flavors and ingredients to get what you want. Kind of like greens, like alfalfa powder does not taste great. So Farella you kind of have to play with the texture um, and the same with this new product that we're working on. And we've rejected several samples because of The that. other flavors were good, but these, this um, one, was the hardest to get right. I think I like B more. Not Another to give it away, but this is one I'm breastfeeding right now, so there are certain things like I can't have pre or prompt, prompt, or I'm not doing creatine, even though, you know. But the ingredients in this new product is something that I can always have. There are some products that you stay away from, or kind of like. Research isn't out yet. Yeah. So um, this is one that I can have every day. I think both taste good. So if you like B, then I like B more. I don't know. What if you just poured it again, make her yeah, close her eyes? Yeah, pour it again, pour it again. But you close your eyes, you don't, yeah, you don't do know. <clears throat> I only have one made, so it doesn't really matter. The other one I think. Well, now she knows that one's A. You gotta mix, you gotta mix She it. doesn't know which one it is. I like that one. <laughs> which, one which one is that? That was C! <laughs> I'm just kidding, there was no C, that's B. I like that one. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. We already have this product in two other flavors that we've confirmed, right? Four. Four? Four or five. Bro. One of them's new, one of them hasn't been done in any other products yet. Oh. Uh. Uh. Exclusive. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we're going to the Arnold. Buff Chick will be at the Arnold. So if you guys are gonna be there, um, please come and say hi. You can sample some of our products. I think we'll have samples of Pre and in a couple of different flavors and say hello to me and our team. Most of our team will be there and it's gonna be a great time. Strong Chunk Supply will also be there. So if you wanna buy, stock up on knee sleeves, stock up on... Swag. Swag, um, come by and see us. We can't wait to see you. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. New special shirt, maybe? Yes. We'll have some what? exclusive. Sorry, I just glitched <laughs> just then. We'll have some exclusive Arnold merch. Um, I think Emrick might be there. I think I say Emerald. Emerald will be in the city of Columbus. Emerald will be there, but not at not the, the expo. expo. Y'all nasty. I know y'all get down and dirty at those expos, so I don't want her around these germs. Emmerich will be signing and paying for, uh, you know, 
paid signatures on Polaroids. Yeah. Yeah, Emmerich's gonna be there, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Papa Squats. Then my dad should be there. Gotta confirm. Okay. Not sure about that, but. All right, let's train. Be's it. Time to deadlift. You ready for that? So this is probably my first workout video since being off my postpartum program. So 18 weeks after giving birth, I was on a very focused postpartum plan. Right about the 18, maybe 17 week mark, I started feeling like really good. And maybe at like four months postpartum, it was like it, I stopped feeling a noticeable difference from day to day or week to week, you know what I mean? So I feel pretty healed, still building back up my strength. The most I've deadlifted is like 185 since coming back. And I'm just gonna ride out a super slow progression. I'm not in any rush, I don't have anything like competition planned or anything like that. Yeah, I'm just gonna like do a linear progression until I can't anymore. Just keep track of everything and then see how that goes. Tip, if I could do my strength journey over again, I would probably ride out a slower linear progression. I did not do that. And um, there's plenty of video evidence <laughs> to show that I didn't do that. But yeah, now I kind of get a second chance at doing it um, with having so much time off of really heavy lifts. So let's get it. That's a super set. Just so we're clear, that was not a deadlift, okay? <laughs> that was like a... Oh, I was doing zip lift. I, I recalled 30 minutes, so I'm trying to oh. knock out what I can. Oh. I'm warming up for those in between. Oh. Moves. He's so strong. Okay, so what Ryan was just doing there, um, and maybe you couldn't see it from exactly that angle, but he was basically doing nothing but hip hinge, very little bend in the knee, whereas I'm doing a standard deadlift. If you can compare them, again, from that angle might be kind of hard, but the difference is a little bit of bend in the knee um, so that it's not just a hip hinge. So his kind of looked like this. Oh, that's hard. And what I'm working on today is more of a bend in the knee, just a regular deadlift. So you want to find a balance between those when you have deadlifts programmed. But if you want to play around with some stiff leg deadlifts, it's a little more self-limiting, um, a little harder, and a little more isolated for the hamstrings. But his looked really good. <laughs> We should do an ASMR video of all of our knees cracking. <laughs> like, together. Wait, if your max was 185, isn't this very, pretty close? Uh, I'm only doing twos. That was the most I've lifted, that's for sets of five. Like one uh, sets of five. Yeah, so I mean, I feel pretty good, so we're gonna see how it looks. If it looks like shit, then we'll go back down, but we're just experimenting. Um, I don't call it ego lifting, but... YouTube lifting. You know, this is like. But you did pull the delts out. So. This is like um, whatever percent, Jolie, can you do the math? Of my max, so all time max, you know? It's like 3%. Oh, that feels pretty good. Yeah, so <laughs> confessional. Um, Ryan just asked a question about my breathing. And if you remember, during pregnancy, you kind of want to switch up your breath in order to control your intra-abdominal pressure. But the thing about that is you will naturally, when weights get heavy enough, you will naturally Valsalva. If you were in a situation where you needed to pick up something really heavy, if you're lifting heavy enough, you'll naturally, your body will naturally Valsalva and try to increase your intra-abdominal pressure, even if you don't, aren't intentionally doing it. So I'm sort of in that space where I'm doing that. So I'm going to intentionally for my main compound lifts, switch up my breathing so that I am doing a brace and using the Valsalva maneuver. Now, I used to, back in the day, Valsalva for every single lift. Dumbbell row, light as hell, warm-ups, Valsalva. Why I did that, I don't know, it's unnecessary. So for my main lifts, especially as I'm going a little heavier and exploring my strength limits, I'm gonna Valsalva more. It's time I commit to one way, because I've kind of been every set doing something different. So that's just my confessional, and here I am. So 
So this is where truly, no, I'm not ego lifting. I feel like strength wise, I 100% could lift maybe two blues, like 220 or 100 kilos. But I'm gonna take a smaller jump just because the postpartum, the thing that is vulnerable is my pelvic floor and my muscles are feeling great. But again, I'm just gonna ride out my progression as slow as possible. Okay, let's do it. So feels good, man. Feels good. Doing some cool stuff here. Oh god, oh god, okay. Zoom out, zoom out. Fuck. I don't know how to zoom out. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay, we're done with our main compound list of the day. Next we're gonna move on to some accessories. First up we have alternating reverse lunges. We're gonna use a barbell on our back so that we're loading a little bit heavier. And then we're going to superset that with kettlebell windmills. So I'll teach you guys how to windmill because it can be a tricky exercise. Um, but it's fun. It's fun when you learn how to do it. Ryan, you got any good tips for the people? For what? Barbell reverse lunges. Oh, I thought you meant life. Barbell reverse lunges. Good luck. Just, just don't do it. Good luck. <laughs> That's all I got. If you're someone like me who, I prefer barbell training over anything, obviously. And I find that sometimes my accessories, I will half-ass them, or I will just like go slightly not as heavy as I could. Whereas when I program like an, a reverse lunge with a barbell, I know that I'm going to hold myself to a slightly higher standard. It's more inspiring to me. And I don't know if that's just a me thing, but it might be something to consider if you're always doing accessories with dumbbells. See if you can either use preloaded barbells or if you can use your regular barbell um, and get in the squat rack and do some of those accessories there. It doesn't have to be everyone, it shouldn't be everyone, but it could help you, you know, get more inspired by a progression of that movement. Alternating barbell lunge, like, I mean, honestly, who cares how heavy you can go, but you might be a little more excited to do it if you're using the bar. Oh, we only have two sets, it's a deload. Deloading volume. Oh, we can most def go heavier. Okay, top sets, top comes off? So that we have a good, yeah. So you can see my form. Oh, duh, yeah, yeah. So we're tomorrow. I thought you were just doing kettlebell oh, windmills. windmills. Yeah, yeah, we, we are. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so yeah, let me teach you guys how to do a kettlebell windmill because it's not a really as common of an exercise. So you're going to take a wide stance. I have the windmill in my left hand here. I'm gonna punch straight up. Then I'm going to take my toes and point them in the opposite direction of my hand. So my toes are kind of angled away from me or away from my hand rather. And then I'm going to reach down with my opposite hand and touch the floor or my toe. Um, important thing here is you want to make sure that your shoulders and your hand and the kettlebell are all aligned, right? So you don't want to be out here. You don't want to be, what else do other people do? Misaligned, I almost can't do it. I can't think of how to do it wrong right now. But yeah, that's a kettlebell windmill. Good for the core, especially the obliques and just a nice kind of fundamental exercise to start building up. If you've ever seen someone do a Turkish getup, the kettlebell windmill is a small part of the Turkish getup. So you can build strength in either of those exercises, but I do love kettlebell windmills just for getting some, a different kind of core movement in. Um, so that's a kettlebell windmill. 
Look at her abs, they're popping out. They really are though. Got, I still have got, um, not to like pick at my body, but just to show, like I've still got a little bit of loose skin from pregnancy, um, but nothing, like nothing crazy. Give him, give him a little shoulder flex. How do I do a shoulder flex? Huh. I don't know how to do them. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go super heavy on these, by the way. You can also hold the kettlebell like this with the weight kind of at the back of your hand. Or if you want to practice a little bit of instability, um, you can have the kettlebell facing up. So let's try that. It's much harder. <laughs> All right, Grid's gonna demo for us. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, so shoulder mobility has a lot to do with your success in the kettlebell windmill and the Turkish getup. Um, so let's see, Grid, scale from one to 10, how good is your shoulder mobility? Uh, I think a solid six, okay. point three. In okay, some days. I have kind of hypermobile shoulders, so you'll see two examples. <laughs> okay, so he's got the form down. Where do I look at? Um, at the weight. Look up at the oh, weight. Okay. Yep. Stands a little wider. Mm hmm. Oh, that, yeah, better. Nice. And so he brought up something good. Your kettlebell will basically stay in about the same spot, and your body's going to move around it. Um, it'll have some vertical displacement, but you want to kind of transition your body around the kettlebell. So your shoulder <laughs> your shoulder and the kettlebell are always stacked on top of each other. It's one of those exercises where if you lift too light of a weight, it's easy to get sloppy. Like your arm's not really vertical, you're kind of just wherever you need to be because it's light. You could hold, you know, a five count kettlebell in any direction, it'd be fine. But as you get a little heavier, it kind of challenges you to stay a little more stacked, like shoulder, elbow, so. to kettlebell. Do you want to try the heavier weight and see if that helps? Okay, yeah, let's see. Already it kind of looks like it's putting your shoulder in a better position. Yeah. So I look at that, yeah? yeah? Yep. Yeah, 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 perfect. Oh, yeah. That's better. That looks good. Oh, I too. Just here, there you go. Better. Nice. That's really good. So you guys see that's how awesome. he's fully stacked? Um, and that's a good tip from Ryan. So if you, I mean, I wouldn't challenge you to go very heavy, but if you find that the lighter weight isn't really doing it for you, um, then try this. Nice grid. It's really easy with a lightweight to compensate and just have your wrist be upright. Mm -hmm. So you could be over here and the wrist isn't doing anything. It doesn't really matter where you are when it's light. But when it's heavy, you're just not gonna be able to hold a 50 pound kettlebell out this way. You could also try half kneeling kettlebell windmills and um, you have lower your range of motion slightly, but it could help to practice the movement pattern with that. Uh, sometimes in half kneeling, you can also bring it down to your forearm. I don't know how good mine looks there, but there you go. Okay, let me put those down. Let's keep it moving. That was only 10 pounds. Leg extensions. Who's excited about these? You know when you're on the leg extension machine, you can just like work just as hard, but like test, make TikTok, come up with TikTok ideas, check in Slack with the team. Hi, Jolie. <laughs> Answering all your messages right now. Leg extensions, done, over those. Um, I've got no tips for you on those, except, you know, get your work done, or you can. What's the next exercise? Spanish squats. Oh, Spanish squats. So Grid doesn't know what a Spanish squat is. Maybe you don't either. He's definitely seen these before. Hold on, I, got, I need a tool. So Spanish squats, you're going to take a band, I have two just because these are slightly thinner bands, and create two loops, step into each one, make sure you're even, and you're just gonna complete a squat. So the cool thing about the placement of the band is that as you descend, your knees are going to pull farther forward. Um, and also, you can get a little bit of VMO action, as you extend back and stand straight up. So this is a Spanish squat. Um, if they're new to you, then just do a body weight and start to get a feel for it or 
uh, progress in the heaviness of your band, um, or you can also add some weight to this one. So we'll see how Grid likes these, but these are great for your snap, crackle, pop knees. I think they'll, you'll like how they feel. So at the end of that rep, when you're fully standing up, you sort of get like a terminal knee extension at the top of the rep. So that's why it can start to feel good for your knees. So I would try those and see if you like them. This is my first time attempting an ab rollout since being pregnant. So I'm gonna see how it looks. One thing you wanna watch out for in postpartum or pregnancy is coning. So coning is something, Jolie will put a picture of it up for us here is something that is a sign of mismanaged pressure. So, let's see. Ryan, can you be my eyes? Uh, yeah. Just, I'm just gonna do one rep. Okay. He's got a call to go do that we're all on. I think I'm gonna have coning because I'm just seeing my way. Oh, God, it's so hard. Yeah, a little. My core is uh, so, kind of noticeable. I'm so weak. Okay, um, I ain't doing those. So, the cool thing about our app is that you can look to see substitutions. So I'm going to navigate to my ab rollouts here. It'll show me the demo of how to do the exercise and everything, and then there's a substitutions link. So you can get an idea of what is a similar exercise, something that you can scale down or scale up. I see a couple of things, and maybe I'll do hollow body holds because I can further scale hollow body holds. So hollow body hold is something that will be great if you're looking to get pull-ups and get pull-up strength. You can do a full strict holly body hold. I think maybe it has some of that coning there. I don't feel super secure. Or you can scale it, do one leg at a time. So that's what I'm gonna do for my last exercise. I will come back to this workout because we do have a meeting scheduled for right this second. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching Grid, Ryan and I work out today. And let me know what kind of workout you wanna see in the next video. Bye.